a stranger came up and started speaking to you on the street, you'd probably want to know a bit more about him and what he was saying before you took him seriously. The same goes for websites. There's a lot of useful information on the internet, but since anyone with web access can publish to it, it's crucial to evaluate those sources when considering their information. In this tutorial, you'll learn about the importance of evaluating information on the internet, you'll learn about some questions to consider when you're looking at websites, and you'll get some practical tips about how to evaluate what you found. Many of us use the internet to gather information for all sorts of things. We might use that information to make medical, political, financial, or social decisions. Our whole way of viewing the world is based on the information that we encounter, and these days most of that information comes from the web. That's why it's so important to evaluate the information that you find. Of course, evaluating internet information is also good for your assignments. It'll make your research better, strengthen your arguments, and just might get you a better grade. When you're looking at a website, first ask yourself, who wrote this information? What can you gather about the author's background? Is the author an expert on this topic? Are they very opinionated on this topic, and how does that inform what they may have written? You might have to do a bit of digging to find out about your page's author. If you don't see the author's name immediately, look for links such as info, about, or other indicators such as the copyright notice that might lead you to more information about the page's author. The author could be an individual or an organization. Once you have the author's name, try googling it to find other things that the author might have written, or look for reviews or other information that can tell you more about their reputation to help determine their credibility. This can help you to decide whether or not to use this website as a source for your research. If you do decide to use the site, knowing about the author will help you analyze the information that you found and use it more effectively. Next, consider the type of site that this information is coming from. Is the page supported by a group, organization, or company? What does the group stand to gain by convincing others of its points? This could be monetary, political, or something else. Is the information likely to have been reviewed by others before being published? Or is this information from a personal site where someone is expressing their own opinion? Again, you might have to look around a little bit on the site to figure out who supports the points that are being expressed or potential biases that these groups might hold. Educational or government sites are more likely to provide objective information. For example, Statistics Canada. Commercial sites are usually motivated to make money in some way. For example, BetterHealthHerbs.com. Shortening the URL to find the home page of a site that you're viewing might also give you information about any groups or organizations that this information is aligned with. When you know more about potential motivations or biases associated with the site, think about how these might affect the information that you're viewing. Also, consider your own emotional attachment to the content of the site. Are you able to objectively evaluate it? Next, ask yourself what sort of evidence the author provides for the points they are trying to make. Does the site list citations for or link out to other websites, data, or print resources? Do the links provided actually work? Can you verify evidence used in the site? Does the site rely on evidence from many different sources or just a couple? The more verifiable evidence that a site uses, the more likely that the information the site is trying to convey is accurate. Finally, consider when this information was published or last updated. Make sure the site you're viewing is either up to date or published at a time that is relevant to the topic that you're studying. There are two acronyms you can use to remember the criteria discussed in this tutorial. One is C-R-A-A-P, or CRAP, where C is for currency, when was the website last updated? R is for relevance. Does it relate to your topic in a meaningful way? A is for authority. Who posted the material? The other A is for accuracy. What evidence is presented to support the information? And P is for purpose. Why was the information created? 
Radar is another tool you can use. The information is essentially the same, just presented in a different order. R is for relevance, A is for authority, D is for date, A is for appearance. This refers to questioning unprofessional looking sites that are full of ads, but remember, looks can be deceiving. And R is for reason, which refers to the purpose or motivation behind the website. Evaluating web sources has never been more important than in the age of deliberately confusing fake news. The International Federation of Library Associations and Institutions has adopted a set of criteria to help you recognize questionable stories. We've already discussed most of these concepts, such as consider the source, check the author, look for supporting sources, and check the date. Additionally, you should also remember to read beyond the headlines. Commonly called clickbait, headlines can sometimes be sensational in order to entice readers to click on them, or in an attempt to make the story go viral. For example, a story circulated on social media about IKEA building a new location in Niagara Falls, Ontario. It received over 45,000 views, but if you read more than the headline, you'll quickly realize the story is an April Fool's Day prank. The purpose or motivation behind a news item is especially important since satire is common. There are several fact-checking websites available to verify questionable stories. For example, Snopes.com, Factscan.ca, and Factcheck.org. However, don't forget to investigate the creator and motivation behind these fact-checking websites as well. In conclusion, when you're researching on the web, be a skeptic. When you're taking in any information, it's good to think about factors that might impact it. This will help you make stronger arguments and better decisions. You'd be skeptical about a stranger's word on the street. It's good to think about internet sources in the same way. If you have any questions or would like to learn more, contact your campus library. Visit our website at niagaracollege.ca slash library for full contact information. Except for screenshots or otherwise indicated, photographs are courtesy of unsplash.com. Visit these resources to learn more about this topic.